Now let us look into different ways of representing a continuous time or discrete time system. In the previous chapters, we already looked into different ways of representing a system. One is by input output relation. Example y of t is equal to x square of t. This is this can be used, this IO relation can be used generically for any system which has an input and gives a output. If the system is LTI system, that is linear and time invariant system, the system can be represented using impulse response that is h of n it can also be represented using linear constant coefficient different difference equation which is of the form sigma k equal to 0 to m a k into y of n minus k is equal to sigma m is equal to 0 to p bm into x of n minus m for example y of n minus 1 by 3 into y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n plus 1 by 3 into x of n minus 1 is example of a lcc da another way of representing a lti system is by using the system function. The system function can be obtained by taking Z transform on both sides of LCC DE. By performing the same, we get that sigma k equal to 0 to m a k into Z transform of y of n minus k is Z power minus k into y of Z that is equal to sigma m equal to 0 to p bm into z power minus m into x of z because z transform of x of n minus m is z power minus m into x of z so we got this equation by taking z transform on both sides of lcc d so from this we see that the system function h of z is equal to y of z divided by x of z is equal to sigma m equal to 0 to p bm into z power minus m divided by sigma k equal to 0 to m a k into z power minus k. Alternatively, the system function can also be obtained from the impulse response as Z transform of h of n which is equal to the system function h of z along with a roc we have already seen that given an roc the system can be characterized for the causality and stability etc also the system function by using the dtft that is in terms of e power j omega can be obtained by performing dtft on lccde so by taking dtft on both sides of the lccde we get that sigma k equal to 0 to m a k into e power minus j omega k by of z this is by taking DTT, dtft of lccde this is equal to sigma m is equal to 0 to p b k into b m into e power minus j omega m x of e power j omega sorry this should be e power j omega so from this the system function h of e power j omega can be written as sigma m is equal to 0 to p b m into e power minus j omega m divided by sigma k equal to 0 to m 
ak into e power minus j omega k. Alternatively, this one can be obtained by putting z is equal to e power j omega in h of j to get h of e power j omega. Also, Fourier transform of the impulse response can be written as h of e power j omega. So, from this we see that any continuous or discrete time system can be represented by using the input-output relation. If the system is LTI, then the same can be represented using the impulse response, LCCDE that is linear constant coefficient difference equation or by using the system function which is h of z or h of e power j omega. We have also seen different ways of getting h of e power j omega or h of z from LCCDE or the impulse response h of n. Now let us look into different ways to find the z transform x of z given x of n. So the z transform along with the ROC can be obtained from x of n using by the definition of that z transform that is sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of n multiplied by z power minus 1 or by inspection or by checking that the x of n is of any form which is known then by using the properties of z transform so given any x of n x of z along with roc can be found by any of the three methods mentioned below Similarly, given x of z plus roc, x of n can be found out by using by different methods, one of which is using the synthesis formula that is given x of z, x of n can be written as 1 by 2 pi j integral over a closed contour x of z multiplied by z power minus n minus 1 dz here c is a closed contour within roc of x of z another way of getting x of n is by inspection uh, that is by checking that x of z is of a standard form or by partial fractions or by power series expansion now let us look into sorry another way of getting x of n is by division now let us look into getting x of n from x of z plus roc for the case of partial fractions or for the case of power series expansion or for the case of division so first we will look into inverse z transform using partial fractions so given any x of z plus roc split x of z into partial fractions then based on roc find x of n so for example suppose the x of z is given as 1 by 1 minus 2z inverse multiplied by 1 minus 3z inverse with the roc as 2 less than mod z less than 3 so in this case x of z can be found out by using partial sorry x of z can be further split by using partial fractions so by splitting x of z into partial fractions we get x of z is equal to minus 2 by 1 minus 2 z inverse 
minus 3 by 1 minus 3 z inverse but the roc is given as 2 less than mod z less than 3 so in this case we see that the roc of the first part could correspond to mod z greater than 2 and the roc of the second part could correspond to mod z less than 3 because of which the intersection of these two leads to an roc of 2 less than mod z less than 3 from this we see that the function x of n could be minus 2 multiplied by z inverse z transform of 1 by 1 minus 2 z inverse with an roc of mod z greater than so this becomes 1 by 2 whole power n u of n minus 3 multiplied by inverse z transform of 1 by 1 minus 3 z inverse multiplied by sorry with an roc of mod z less than 3 so in this case the corresponding time series becomes minus sorry this should be 2 power n minus 3 power n u of minus n minus 1 so finally x of n becomes 3 into 3 power n u of minus n minus 1 minus 2 into 2 power n u of n so from this we see that given x of z plus roc if it is not of any standard form we can split x of z into partial fractions as shown and using the ROC, we can find the X of N. Now, let us look into the way in which we can find the inverse jet transform using power series expansion. That is, given any X of Z, if it is of any standard form, convert it into a series, then Finally, you can get that series to the form sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of n multiplied by z power minus n. So, suppose x of z is given as cos of 1 by z with ROC as every z except 0. We know that cos x can be expanded as 1 minus x square by factorial 2 plus x power 4 by factorial 4 minus x power 6 by factorial 6 plus and so on. So using this we can expand cos of 1 by z that is x of z. So we see that x of z can be written as 1 minus z power minus 2 by factorial 2 plus z power minus 4 by factorial 4 minus z power minus 6 by factorial 6 plus and so on. So from this we see that this is of the form sigma n equal to 0 to infinity x of n multiplied by z power minus n. So x of n can be written as minus 1 whole power n by 2 divided by factorial n if n is even and non-negative 0 otherwise. So given any x of z by getting a expansion of x of z we got it to the form that is equivalent to the definition of the z transform so from which we are able to get the x of n. Now we will look into another way of finding the inverse z transform that is u by division. So here for performing the division we need the information like the z transform that is x of z and also the information if the signal is causal or anti-causal. For example, let us consider a case in which x of z is equal to 1 by 1 minus z inverse and it's also given that the signal x of n is causal. 
so here we can get the sequence x of z x of n as shown so by performing the division of 1 with 1 minus z inverse so by performing the standard division as shown we get that the division will evaluate to 1 plus z inverse plus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3 plus and so on so finally we see that x of z by division can be written as 1 plus z inverse plus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3 plus and so on this is of the form equivalent to the definition of the z transform so sigma n equal to 0 to infinity x of n multiplied by z power minus n so from this we see that x of n can be written as 1 comma 1 comma 1 and so on where the first one corresponds to the instant n is equal to 0 for the same problem or say for the same x of z is equal to 1 by 1 minus z inverse if a sequence is anti-causal we can write that we can perform the division as shown by simplifying x of z as z divided by z minus 1. In this case, we divide z with z minus 1. So first we multiply by 1 to get, sorry, first we multiply by z because this is z minus 1 it can be written as minus 1 plus z. So we get minus, sorry, first we multiply by minus z to get z and minus z square. So by performing the subtraction in the standard division form, we get z square. Then we further multiply by minus z square to get z square minus z cube. So by extending this division in the same form, we get minus z minus z square minus z cube minus z power 4 and so on so the finally x of z boils down to minus z minus z square minus z cube minus z power 4 and so on from this we see that the by the definition of x of z the values of the sequence x of n are present for n less than or equal to minus 1 from this x of n is equal to minus 1 comma minus 1 comma and so on minus 1 comma 0 comma 0 here the last bust one zero corresponds to the instant n is equal to 0 so for the same x of z if it is causal we got x of n in some form if the sequence if the sequence is anti-causal we get x of n in some other form 